Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now Tracy Savage, and she played Debbie in Friday the 13th Part 3. Yes, that's right, the one that was in 3D. Hey, Tracy, how are you doing? Slasher Scotty, I am so happy to be here with you. I have heard great things about you by a mutual friend, and I am just happy to be talking about uh, a time of my life many, many years ago, um, but that brings back tons of fun memories. Absolutely. I don't have very specific memories, I'm warning you, but they're all good, and they're all positive, and I, um, it was really a great time in my life, awesome. and, um, and even though I, my career is gone on and on and on in different directions, and I've had just completely different things besides acting, um, yeah. I, I'm so happy that I was involved in this movie Nice. when I was a kid. Um, Absolutely. It's been, it's been fun. Absolutely. So the first question I got for you is how did you get your start into acting? Um, well, I come from a showbiz family. Okay. I have an older brother uh, who was um, really talented musically. He could sing and dance. And, and we were living in Detroit, Michigan at the time. And um, he had asthma, so he couldn't do sports. And so my mom got him involved in community theater. And um, he uh, got hired to go on the road with a musical called Mame, and we went on the road. The whole family went um, when he was about maybe nine and would have put me at about five and my little brother about two and um, toured all over the country. And um, then my and but but. Prior to that, um, we started going on interviews, and I did my first commercial at two years old in Detroit, Michigan, nice. um, an American Motors Rambler car commercial when I was two years old. So we stayed in Detroit um, doing modeling and print work, you know, and, and commercials, and then my brother was doing the musicals. He did lots of different productions, my older brother. And so when I was about six and a half, my parents knew that that... The, my brothers and I might have potentially had a decent acting career. And my dad was in advertising and um, we, he, his job, it would have been better for him to either live in New York or LA. Right. And we chose Los Angeles because the weather's nicer. And mm -hmm. so the whole family moved to Los Angeles and um, we got an agent, my brothers and I, and within like two weeks, I had booked two commercials and my older brother had booked a commercial and my little brother well, he went on to work and work and work. A lot of people in the horror genre will remember him from Salem's Lot, the uh, the uh, Stephen King nice. horror film. Uh, he was the one that was in the coffin and that appears outside the window, scratching awesome. on the window. That's my brother, Brad Savage. But so I, I really was acting my entire childhood from the time I was two years old, moved to L.A. at seven, got an agent, and then worked all through... Um, Pretty much until I went away to college. Um, I worked in the business. I was on Little House in the Prairie for two years, and I did episode of Happy Days and Eight is Enough. These are old shows. Many of you probably don't even know, ever heard of them. Um, My dad, he loved Little House in the Prairie. He watched that. He watched that in the yeah. wall religiously. That's awesome. I just happened to find it. So I was under contract for two years on that show. Nice. I had screen tested for the part of Laura. It was between me and Melissa Gilbert for the role. Mm -hmm. And um, I really wanted the role. <laughs> I, I, I was Laura in my mind. Nice. Uh, I'd read all the books and mm -hmm. I was kind of a tomboy of a girl. You know, I, I played sports and stuff with the boys right. and, and um, I... And but I didn't get the part because I was a few years older than Melissa Gilbert, and they thought that I would mature um, and blossom faster, and they needed her to be younger. Um, yeah. But then they wrote me in, or they hired me to play a neighbor who was um, basically a part of the books. Christy Kennedy was my character's name, nice. and I was under contract for um, for two years, and I did about maybe ten or twelve episodes. But I just happened to be on the Peacock Network. My son um subscribes to peacock to watch the office <laughs> and um I, I was i saw oh my gosh all my little house episodes are there and i saw my very first one that i'd ever done which cracked me up i was so bad <laughs> i was not a very good kid actor but um anyway yeah so i i, I worked uh, a ton as a child all through and i would say friday the 13th i was already in i'd started my first year of college and i was really 
moving on from the business, I was, um, I was going to be a journalist and I actually was a broadcast news journalist for 30 years. Nice. And, yeah. um, and so I was done with the industry. I was going to UCLA at the time. And, um, but my mom had an agency, a child talent agency. And she called me and said, Hey, Tracy, they're casting for this movie. And I'm like, mom, you know, I'm kind of moving on. Well, but I think you should just try. And so, okay. So I went on the interview and didn't even know what it was for. They, they kind of hid the title of the name during the interviewing process. Um, it was non-union and they didn't want to make an issue. That's my dog, by the way. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> what kind of dog is it? She's a golden doodle named uh, Lucky. So I have a cockapoo. Oh, they're yep. so cute. So they cute. are. Anyway, um, um, so I just, um, I, I, they kept it, you know, quiet what it was about, but I knew I was going to be filming for six weeks and that was going to pay for college. So I was happy about that. And um, I did the movie. And of course I, you know, found out what it was, what it was. Right. Um, but, you know, but that time it was only part three. So there'd only been two, episode you know two different versions before that mm -hmm. so friday the 13th was popular but it wasn't like it is today okay. it was still kind of new yeah. um and halloween had been around and yeah. um but anyway it was fun i, I and so that's it, it was i would say that that was probably the last thing i did like besides um playing news reporters in tv yeah. shows after that i got hired a lot to play a tv news reporter because that's what i was doing for the rest of you know mm -hmm. for the next 30 years of my life right um but so friday the 13th was really the last main thing i did because then right after that i moved to michigan to transfer to university of michigan and uh finished up college and then stayed in the midwest uh at three different tv stations i worked for six years before i came back to la to work in a tv station in los angeles that's awesome. So obviously, uh, front of the 13th part three, it was set in 3d. So what was it like working in front of the 3d technology? You know, it was really an interesting experience. Uh, the 3d technology was, um, pretty raw, pretty new, pretty, um, underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they had a process for it, but it's been since streamlined and better now, but, um, it was um, it was tricky. They had to shoot uh, with well. The main thing that affected me, as far as the technology is concerned, is that the lighting had to be absolutely perfect mm -hmm. in order for um, for the three D effect to work. Mm -hmm. And um, so there were long setups, a lot of time getting the camera right, getting the lighting right, um, and so it was it was an interesting an interesting process and then of course we had to do a lot of those scenes that were gimmicky because <laughs> to take advantage you know the yo-yo right. and yeah. and then well the knife through the neck is classic 3d yeah. um but, but so they did um a lot of uh of those kinds of setups those kinds of scenes uh to take advantage of the 3d um technology Absolutely. So obviously Debbie makes mention of being pregnant, but yeah. obviously that doesn't really go anywhere. So like, what are your thoughts on the whole forgotten character development of Debbie? Well, um, Scotty, <laughs> character development, you're really reaching. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're really reaching. That's these true. Horror, these horror films are about Jason, yep. right? Friday yep. the 13th is about Jason. Friday the 13th is about... <clears throat> you know, grisly, scary <laughs> murders. Yes. And so were they really worried about character development? Were they really worried about um, acting? Not yeah, so much. Not so much. Um, it was really about, you know, what can we do to scare the heck out of kids? And um, so I think that, so to answer your question though, about the pregnancy thing, yeah. obviously I've had decades to think about it. Not that I've thought about it, much but um, it feels to me like it was just one of those intriguing things that they kind of threw in maybe even later in one of the vision you know uh, versions of the script the rewrites mm -hmm. of the script just to add a little intrigue to it to make me a little edgier yeah and um make it more you know um more of a tragedy when mm -hmm. i was murdered um you know, and just also to show that these kids were, um, while good kids, they were also out for mischief. 
uh, right. any kind of mischief. And they're, you know, away for a weekend. Um, and it wasn't just going to be, you know, playing cards and fishing. There was going to be, you know, we're all in a big house together. And so it was just, it was really just, I think, again, I didn't write the script, but I think it was right. just to add a little bit of intrigue and yeah. um, a little spice to my character, mm -hmm. jazz it up a little bit. Because you're right, it never, there was really not a mention of it again later on. Yep. And um, I did have a bikini shot and I wasn't showing. <laughs> right. I didn't have a baby, a, a baby bump, um, right. you know, so, so, um, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it was, it's kind of a funny thing to do. And, and it's been fun that people, you know, it's one of the, oh yeah, Demi was pregnant. Yeah. That's so neat. That's so interesting. Right. I think it would have been really cool if, like, Debbie would have been the final girl. Imagine, like, have, having a final girl that's pregnant and having to really go after this killer, you know what I mean? Yeah. And basically fight, not just for her own life, but her unborn child. Right, right. No, that's so true. It would have yeah. made that whole storyline um, even more compelling, and it would have meant probably another week on the set for me. So that would have been cool. That would have <laughs> been have, awesome. I would have been happy with that. Um, it was so much fun working on the show, working on the movie yeah. um, that uh, the six weeks, you know, flew by um, yeah. and it would have been fun to even have a few more. Awesome. So what was, how was your death scene? How was it filmed and prepped? Wow. It was um, crazy. I mean, I, I, I'd never died before in a movie and I'd worked a lot as a kid, um, but I'd never had a, death scene mm -hmm. um i did have a scene with a dead body um do you remember the movie legend of lizzie borden yes uh, it was with elizabeth montgomery i played yep. uh, elizabeth montgomery as a young girl i didn't and, know that yeah and i had okay. to um my father was a, a mortician and i had to to go down and he had me touch the body but i never played the character that died so mm -hmm. that added its own level of um, interest but um because it was in 3d and because it was really a technical thing yeah. um, that they had to get it right, mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of opportunity to, to do it multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what they had to do, and it's I think it's an interesting story how they did it. Um, you know, the knife came out through my neck. Yeah. So what they did is they had me go to a special effects supervisor who um, mm -hmm. created a, um, a copy of my torso from about my waist up past my shoulders to my neck and made a mold of it and then made a, a rubber, like a foam rubber um, reproduction of my torso, nice. everything, chest, everything. And um, then what they did is they glued that torso just under my neck okay. and where the fake torso came out and where my real body was, was a little plate there was you know a little bit of room so that's where they could get the knife in and okay. bring it out through the through the neck yes. um so they glued it so just that process was hours in the makeup chair because right. you know again 3d was tricky and the lighting was tricky and mm -hmm. so um it was a long long hours of getting the, the this this thing glued on so that you couldn't mm -hmm. see the seam and um so then, th so there was that, and then um, they they put me in the hammock, and what they did is they they cut a hole in the hammock, mm -hmm. and I my bottom half of my body was under the hammock, and my upper half of the body was on top of you know yeah. through the hole, yeah. sitting on top of the hammock, and then they put my torso on top, the fake torso on top mm -hmm. of the hammock. So then the the person with the knife, the uh, special effects guy, was under the hammock with me, nice. and he could sneak the knife knife up and poke it through but you know they only had i think two of those foam rubber replicas of my body and given that it took hours to um attach it to me it wasn't like we were going to be doing this over and over and over again right it had to happen correctly the first time and the yeah. lighting had to be right and the the you know the 3d effect had to work and the blood you know there was the the knife itself had a little tube Mm -hmm. uh connected that they you know it, it seems pretty primitive but it was just like right. a pump or something that they would pump to get blood mm -hmm. to come out um and that had to work right too and um you know if the blood like squirted or if it oozed or they wanted to make sure that it looked realistic so um 
it was a lot of work and a lot of setup and a lot of expertise on the special effects people um, and the lighting people and the cinematographers mm -hmm. to be able to get what was what, maybe a four second shot from, yeah. you know, I sit down, I'm reading, wow. I got the magazine, I see blood, I look up, you know, and there's Danny being, his body is up there. And then as yep. I'm coming down, you know, I get the the knife in the neck. So um, it was a quick shot yeah. and it was a ton of work to make it happen. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like, oh my gosh. And it, it, it's like no pressure. Like you have one take, but no pressure. Yeah. Well, I mean, all I had to do was, you know, scream. <laughs> so right. it yeah. wasn't like it was, you know, that yeah. tough. And I'll tell you, I could have, even if I had totally flubbed it up, it wouldn't have mattered. Honestly, the yeah. acting, they didn't care. They just, not that they didn't they needed care, that technology to work. Yeah, the main concern, and, yeah. the main concern for every scene that was shot was that it visually looked good and right. visually was scary and visually, yeah. you know, would get people's attention. So, right. um, so yeah. it was easy. It was fun. Absolutely. That's, that's great. So what was the best part about filming Friday the 13th part three and what was the worst? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I would say looking back today that the best part was just being on a set mm -hmm. with a bunch of people my own age a big group of my peers um and a and a young director mm -hmm. and a young producer i mean the guys were they were in their 20s they mm -hmm. were kids mm -hmm. and um and the you know the the cast was all really young mm -hmm. and it was we just had fun just yeah. being around each other was great fun I would have to say that that was probably the best thing about it for me nice. I I knew that I wasn't going to be um, pursuing acting anymore I was moving to Michigan right. and to finish my degree in journalism and I was done acting I had kind of already been done before I got hired for this role right. but um so, so it wasn't so much, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. I wasn't worried how I would come across. I wasn't stressed that, you know, will, will, will I get another job after this? Will, will it, I, I had none of those fears that maybe actors who want to go on and have acting careers might right. feel when they're working on a movie. I didn't care. I was just here to have fun. You know, I didn't want to embarrass yeah. myself, but I wanted to have a good time. And so it really took a lot of pressure off and I just enjoyed being on the fun set. It was um, shot kind of close to my home here in Los Angeles. Um, and so it was an easy um, drive, you know, to get to the set yeah. and, um, and just being around a lot of young, excited, talented people um, was really, really amazing. Yeah. Um, and it didn't hurt that, like I said, uh, I needed the money for college and um, I'll never forget so I got paid every week for being on the set. Yeah. And, um, you know, back then it wasn't a lot of money, um, mm -hmm. not a ton of money for, compared to what actors can yeah. make. Um, it was probably like, I I'm guessing maybe $200 a day, maybe a thousand dollars for the week for wow. five days. And so I probably made $6,000, um, working mm -hmm. on the movie. And then, um, like fast forward about a year and a half later, I'm in Michigan. I'm an out-of-state student at University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. Tuition was through the roof. Right. And I got a residual check for okay. the movie. It had been sold to television for the first time. Nice. And I got a check in the mail for about $6,000. Wow. Maybe it was a little less, but it was, and, and I like, you know, this was again back in the 80s. Uh, mid eighties, I freaked out like, Oh my God, there must be a typo. They must've, it must be 600. It can't be really six. I was so like blown away <laughs> and it paid for my next year of college, which was really That's awesome. Really. I wasn't expecting it. So it was really, really awesome. That's um, awesome. And then, and then the other, I will say the other wonderful aspect about being in this movie is that here we are. Yeah. Oh my God. Almost 40 At least years. 40 years later, yeah. Yeah, and you and I are here talking about yep. it. Yep. And um, how cool is that? How yeah. cool is it that I did a movie 
you know, I did a lot of work as a kid in the biz, but you know, I did a movie that still mm -hmm. has has legs that people still yeah. care about and see people are still excited about. Yeah. And I'm a college professor now. I teach journalism at a community college near my house. I've been teaching for about seven or eight years. I'm a full-time professor. Awesome. And my students are between the ages of 18 and average, between 18 and 22, 23. Nice. And of course they all, there's a lot of horror fans and a lot of people who know the movie. And um, and, I, and I, in my introduction to them, I show them the shot of me with the knife hanging out my throat and, nice. and, a, and a shot of me and Jason. And um, and they, you know, they love it. They think it's awesome. great fun and um, has nothing to do with journalism, but right. it's, you know, introducing me as, I yeah. also teach uh, video production too. So, yep. you know, the film industry. So um, it's so cool. I think it's amazing that all these years later, I'm able to um, share that with yes. my students and they think it's the coolest thing ever. So nice. um, that's that, awesome. Yeah. That's pretty pretty when I graduated from my uh, community college, um, I was on campus there and then I, I transferred to an online school because uh, they had my major where it was accredited in that. So I went to yeah. Champlain College in Vermont. That's and uh, I had to take an ethics class for a general education course. And, uh, and my, my ethics professor was Carrie Noonan, who played uh, Paula in Friday the 13th, part six. Wow. And then it's funny That's because amazing. after I graduated from that college, I ended up working at that college as an online professor, as the, uh, as the uh, head professor of the uh, advanced PHP programming classes. And it was, it's like, I always, I, even though she was on campus and I was online, I always say I was like a coworker of, you know, Carrie. That's Newton, amazing. Which is, which is That's cool. amazing. And I will tell you, um, community colleges are the greatest. They're yeah. so amazing and i i love my students so much but i also give them so much credit because um you know these aren't kids who mommy and daddy are sending them off to college to have some great experience these are kids who are working full time i say kids yeah. they're adults but they're wor <laughs> working full time yeah. maybe they're helping to raise their siblings yeah. um you know they're, they're they've got you know complicated lives and yet yeah. they're in college at a community college yeah. so i feel so happy yeah, to be able to help absolutely. them and, and mentor them. And, and it's good for you to, you know, to go to school yeah. and get that degree. It's really, absolutely. really. Good. And, and for anybody listening that doesn't know if they would want to go to college, I know I had some family that, that didn't want to go to college and that, but it, it's not like, you know, what, high school, it's a lot different and it gets you set for doing something you want to do for the rest of your life. Like right now I'm working as the senior web developer for the United States Coast Guard. Like, I worked my butt off to get to that level. And obviously like I'm doing interviews, but this is just something I do for a hobby. This isn't my yeah. career. That's like, so know, great. So That's I just great. do this because I enjoy it. And I'm, yeah. I've been a fan of yours since I was growing up and like, you know, oh, all the other you. people I interview and I, this is something I enjoy doing and sure. I know I, I don't make any money off of it. This, this yeah. is what I do for a hobby, you know, yeah. but I work my butt off, you know, to do what I do for a living. So <laughs> See, those are the stories yeah. that I, I just yeah. think are the greatest. And it I all started at awesome. community college. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I taught at, uh, I taught at USC. I taught at the Annenberg School of Journalism. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, it was a great experience, nice. um, but I really, I prefer my community college. I prefer nice. my students. I Absolutely. prefer just, just, you know, be, I'm kind of a mentor. I call myself a helicopter teacher, like a helicopter parent. You know, yeah. I kind of hover and, hey, <laughs> make sure you turn in your homework. I, I'm, I'm kind of like a mom to them. But it's it's fun. It's That's really awesome. So I have two more questions for you. Yeah. Um, we're pretty much done the Friday the Thirteenth portion. But the next one is obviously you mentioned you were a, you are a well known you know well known journalist for covering the O.J. Simpson murder trial. So yeah. what was that experience like? Um, it was uh, fascinating. It was um, amazing. It was horrible and awful. Oh, I'm frozen. Let me see. I'll wait till you're good now. Yeah. Okay. It was. Um, <laughs> It was quite the experience. I worked on that uh, murder trial. It was almost a year mm -hmm. uh, every day going down to the criminal yep. courts building and covering the murder trial. And, you know, it was really sad. Two innocent people brutally mm -hmm. murdered. Um, it was a Hollywood type of case yep. involved celebrities. Um, the lawyers became celebrities. The judge became a celebrity. Um, it was pretty crazy. I... Um, I had broken a lot of stories, you know, exclusive um, information that I reported. 
And um, I actually, I don't know if you knew, I got in, um, subpoenaed by the defense to okay. testify. And I took the witness stand in this, in the O.J. Simpson trial. The defense wanted me to reveal my sources. Um, it was their working theory that O.J. was framed. This is the defense, O.J.'s attorney, said he was framed by the cops. And they wanted me, they thought that I would reveal, um, they thought, they wanted me to reveal that my sources um, were cops. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying if they were or weren't, but mm -hmm. their theory depended on me saying right. that so that it would bolster their theory that OJ was framed. Right. Um, but I took the witness stand, scariest 40 <laughs> minutes, 20 minutes of my life, just because yeah. it was, it was um, watched all over the world. I mean, there were journalists right. from all over the world. Um, but I use the shield law, which is a protection that journalists have that um, allow you to conceal your confidential sources. You don't have to reveal their identities. Nice. And um, um, so, but, but I was worried. It was, it was scary. And I was afraid I, you know, how I was going to come across and being, mm -hmm. and my career was, I was anchoring a newscast in Los Angeles and I thought, oh God, this is going to destroy my career. And, right. um, and, but I, I have the video of it, the recording of it. Um, and I show it to my students when I talk about yeah. um, the shield law and how that works. And so it's me in the courtroom walking up and getting on the witness stand. And, you know, I swear I will tell the truth. And then mm -hmm. talking to the lawyers, you know, answering their questions. And nice. at one point, Judge Ito, you know, asked me a question and I mm -hmm. turned to him. And so, yeah, it was, um, it was really quite an experience to work on that. Case. That's awesome. So the last question I got for you is, do you have any projects in the works or anything at all that you would like to promote to the listening and viewing audience, as well as any social media accounts and or websites you would like to promote? You are so good. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> low key you. right now. You know, I, I don't, um, once in a while, I'll do a project mm -hmm. um, with, uh, for friends. And in fact, recently, a couple years ago, I did um, a small role um, in Deborah Voorhees' film, um, um, 13 Fanboy. 13 Fanboy. Yep. And um, I hadn't really worked, um, it had been a couple of years since I'd been a news reporter, but in this movie I played myself and it was so much fun. It was such a blast to work on that film. And also to be, to be able to meet mm -hmm. some of the other Friday the 13th actors. Yes. I, um, um, don't do a lot of conventions. I've done two in my entire life because as soon as I quit acting, I had a journalism career that kept me busy and I didn't have time mm -hmm. to um, go to conventions. And then I um, was a mom for, you know, mm -hmm. I still am, he's 16. So I'm raising a kid. So that kind of got in the way, not got in the yeah. way, but I didn't want to take off on weekends to go do conventions. Right. Um, so the long story short is I didn't ever get a chance to really meet a lot of the other Friday the 13th actors. So when I worked on that film a couple of years ago, uh, I got a chance to meet everybody awesome. and it's getting distribution and it's, it's going to be out soon. I'm so yep. excited. October 22nd. Yep. Deborah is amazing. This woman she is. is just, she's a good friend of mine. Me and her became really good friends. Uh, yeah. She's helping me get people to promote 13 Fanboy. She's yeah. been, you know, uh, she's been a gods and I'm also an indie filmmaker. So she's been giving me advice on that myself. And she really, yeah. I ha I am so impressed by how she put it together and got yeah. the funding and by, you know, giving uh, fans an opportunity to be a part of it um, is really a brilliant thing. And um you know, she just did a great job. It was really, she really wonderful. Did. So, so yeah, that's the one thing I'll promote. Um, awesome. But um, I'm not really active. Uh, I do have a website on social media. I think it's Tracy um, quote Debbie Savage or something okay. like that on Facebook um, that people can if they want to okay. find. Um, and I will re I, I reply to that occasionally. Um, awesome. It's my Friday the Thirteenth um, Facebook nice. site, but. Awesome. Um, but that's it. I'm just, uh, I'm getting ready to head back to campus for the first time in almost, two, you know, a year and yep. a half, uh, to be teaching on campus. So I'm excited about that. Yep. I know. And I, uh, emailed, uh, when I was talking to Mike Gutridge and he, uh, put me in touch with you and then he's like, well, do it. Email her soon, Scotty, because she's going to get ready to start school again. She'll be busy. And yep. I'm like, I already got her emailed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good for you. Good Absolutely. For you. Well, awesome. I thank you so much, Tracy, for joining me. 
It's been a pleasure, Scotty. Awesome. Great, great to meet you. And great to meet you too. Really enjoyed absolutely. the experience. I absolutely did as well. And uh, you have a great rest of your day. All right. And please Thank stay you. safe. You all got right? it, dear. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.